Rivers in the gun. On the march, Steelers with a corner fire. They pick it up. He throws for the end zone. Oh, it caught out of the air it's to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. The Steelers defended. It popped up in the air. Joe Hayden hit it, and it ended up in Keenan Allen's hands for the 10-yard touchdown. Well, at least that time they covered him with a cornerback and not a linebacker, which <laughs> he tried to do uh, against the Chargers. We're joined now by Dale Lally. Dale, of course, has covered the Steelers for years, does so now for DK Pittsburgh Sports and also the Steelers Radio Network. How are you, Dale? Uh, good, Stan. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Let's start out just as an overview. Um, a lot of people point to uh, corner as a number one need. I'm not so sure that inside linebacker is an even higher priority. Where do you where do you stand on that? Yeah, I think that's their number one need. Uh, other than, of course, you know, if they can get a defensive playmaker, I don't care what position he plays. Uh, but inside linebacker is the position that, to me, you know, if they had to line up and play tomorrow, um, which of course they don't. If you look at uh, John Bostic snaps down the stretch in the last six games, I don't think he played more than 25% of the snaps in any single game. So obviously they felt that, that uh, he was not what they needed out there on a regular basis. Uh, LJ Ford's going to be an unrestricted free agent. And I'm not sure that, you know, you you necessarily want to bring him back and fill that role again this year. You want to make an upgrade over that. So to me, outside inside linebacker is the number one position of need because they have cornerbacks. They can play, you know, I still like Cam Sutton as a player. Uh, they still have Artie Burns there. I know people are, have given up on the guy, but he's still on the team. Uh, inside linebacker, to me, is the number one need. Overall, I don't know how much you've begun to delve into the draft. Do you think it's a better bet that they find that guy uh, through free agency or through the draft? Well, we saw last year, Stan, there were four – guys that everybody had targeted uh, as the number one or the top prospects at inside linebacker, and they all went in the top 20 picks. Um, this year, there are maybe three or four of those guys. Uh, Devin White's the number one guy. He will go somewhere in those top 20 picks more than likely, and then you're looking at a couple of other guys there that, uh, that could also fall into that range. So, you know, I think if you're going to take one, you have to take them in, you know, in the first couple of rounds at the very least. Um, and then you're looking at, you know, it, it's it's different to play that position to me than it is to, to play at cornerback. And because when you're in the inside linebacker position, you're also being asked to do a lot in coverage. Um, for a rookie to do that, it's very difficult because you, you have to read and react a lot more than you do at cornerback. Cornerback, it's, okay, you line up, you got this guy, unless we're in zone, and then it's, you got this zone. If you're playing linebacker, you got you got to worry about play action fakes. You got to watch backs coming out of the backfield. There's a lot more involved there, so I think it's more difficult for those guys to make an impact early in their in their career, at least in a, in a you know unless you're a, a truly outstanding player. Well, a lot of people, of course, point to Leighton Vander Esch, who played for the Cowboys, and is a guy the Steelers had their eye on, and you know he had a very good rookie year, but. Uh, upon further review, as someone once said, you could see that you know he had his issues too. Uh, that all is a setup, and I wanted to lead you into this. It sounds like that their better bet for immediate impact, and they still think that you know they're going to be a contender, would be through the free agency route. So um, your article was basically on inside linebackers available. Let's go through the list, Dale, and read them off, and give us your analysis and you know likelihood of them being able to sign a guy like that. Yeah, to me, I mean, I think the the number one guy, uh, if you look at him, is probably going to be Jordan Hicks uh, from the uh, from the Eagles. Uh, he's a guy that uh, has been a little banged up the last couple of years, but in 2016, when he played a full 16 game season, had five interceptions at the inside linebacker position, which uh, you know, in 11 passes defense, that that's really, I mean, that that fits the bill to a T. You're looking for. Production. The Steelers haven't had a guy that had five interceptions in a season since Troy Polamalu in what 2010. Wow, uh, it's got to lay that out there for you. So, I mean, this is a guy that that uh, can make some plays for you. And you know, the Eagles are 16 million dollars over the salary cap before every, anything even starts. So they're going to have to, have, you know, have some trouble signing some guys. Um, he did have an Achilles tendon injury in 2017. I uh, came back last year and made 12 starts, uh, missed four games with a calf issue. 
but he's 27 and he can still play the game. I think he would be, the, you know, an ideal fit for them. Uh, then you're looking at guys like uh, Denzel Perryman from the Chargers. Uh, he's coming off an LCL injury, uh, you know, so that's, uh, you know, a bit of a concern. But he, he's 26, um, had 52 tackles and an interception last year in nine games. So, you know, this, this is another guy that, that can make some plays for you uh, as a coverage backer. Um, perhaps the ideal guy would have been Quan Alexander from the Buccaneers, uh, but he's coming off an ACL injury that he suffered in October. So mm-hmm. who knows what the, you know, what, what's going to hold up with for him, uh, whether, you know, when he's going to be able to play, but he's, he's six one, two hundred twenty seven 227 pounds. He's almost identical in size to Ryan Shazier, uh, does a lot of the same things. Um, six career force fumbles, uh, 22 passes defense, um, you know, five interceptions in his first three seasons. So he can, he can pick the ball off and do those kind of things and, and, and be the kind of linebacker that they need. Uh, and then there's a couple of guys that I looked at that are, are currently four, three outside linebackers, uh, with their current teams, but I think would, would be well served to play inside for the Steelers. They're both former Pro Bowl guys, though. Uh, and so it might cost you a little bit more money. The first one's Anthony Barr from the Vikings. Um, he's six, five and 245 pounds. He is like Leighton Vander Esch. Uh, you know, he's a former college running back at, at UCLA, uh, and is a guy that, uh, you know, can cover a little bit and, and do some things. And and uh, the other one is K.J. Wright. People may recognize him from the Seahawks. Uh, this is a guy that, uh, you know, he, he, he's going to be 30 in July, uh, so you probably don't sign him to a long-term deal, maybe a two- or three-year deal. Uh, but he's he's been very, very productive for the Seahawks. Uh, he's coming. He had some injury issues last year, uh, but he came back in their playoff game and had uh, seven tackles and an interception against the Cowboys in the playoffs. So, that's a guy that uh, you know could certainly, even if you draft one, you, you take a KJ Wright or you bring KJ Wright in for a year or two and allow him to play the position while the rookie learns, kind of like what they did with with uh, you know Larry Foot and uh, Lawrence Timmons. Yep, undoubtedly, Dale Lally's our guest. Uh, there are a couple of really high profile guys that Steelers fans or eyebrows were raised. Uh, CJ Mosley. Um, I would imagine that if the Ravens don't reach a deal, they'll tag him. Um, but is he just too expensive? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he gets somewhere, you know, if they franchise tag him upwards of $10 million. Uh, and to me, you know, he's he's a good linebacker. He's good in their system for what they ask him to do. He's not great in coverage, though. They need a guy who can cover. That's why Quan Alexander would have been, you know, the perfect guy if he's not coming off an ACL. Now, maybe, they, you know, the Steelers bring him in and, and check that knee out, and they say, well, he's going to be ready in, you know, two months. And they and they roll the dice with me. He's 25 years old, after all. Um, but you know, I think Mosley is uh, is a guy that Baltimore really just can't afford to lose. Especially, you know, Terrell Suggs is going to be 37 this offseason. Right, he's um, also a free agent. Yeah, somebody needs to be that next guy, the next leader of their defense, and it's been Mosley who's been kind of tapped as the as the next guy. Um, you know, if you lose Mosley, then you almost have to bring Suggs back at 37 years old. And how much longer does he have? What about a guy who's thing with the, the – if they have to put all that money into C.J. Mosley, which you expect they would, uh, what about a guy like Zadarius Smith? Could he translate into being – he's huge. Could he translate into being an inside guy? Uh, he, was, he was actually Bud Dupree's bookend in college. Uh, they, he played one side and Bud played the other. He's more of an outside guy. Uh, defensive end, I, I would like him. If the Steelers are going to have to also make a decision on Bud Dupree, either they're going to have to uh, get him to take some kind of pay cut or, or sign him to an extension. Uh, Matt Williamson and I have talked about this a lot on Steelers Nation Radio. Uh, my idea would be to go to Bud and say, "Hey, we're going to offer you uh, 24 million over the next uh, four years uh, instead of the 9.2 million this year. Uh, take it or leave it." And if he, he says now, if he box at that, and, and six million dollars a year, I know people are going to say, "Well, you don't pay him six million dollars a year." That's average starter money for an edge rusher. Uh, if you look out at what everybody else is making, but if he doesn't want to do that, then you release him and you say, "Okay, we got nine point two million dollars. I'd spend it on Zadarius Smith in a, in a heartbeat and replace him." All right, that brings up another question. Two questions about that. Um, what about, again, dealing with the Ravens, and they've got free agents, I mean, four of their linebackers, uh, Mosley, uh, Suggs, there's not going to be a big market for him, but 
Uh, you know, you just talked about Zadaria Smith. What about, and I may not be pronouncing his name, Patrick Onwasser. Uh, the thing that when I've, when I've seen him play, Dale, against the Steelers, in other games too, he makes plays to me, and he's a free agent. He's an, he's a restricted free agent, but I'm wondering about a guy like that. He's listed as an inside backer, and I've seen the guy make plays. Yeah, I like him as well, and you know maybe he's their fallback option if something doesn't happen with Mosley. Uh, but I got to imagine that they try to keep him around. Uh, you know, a young inside linebacker who can run and cover like he does. And as you mentioned, he's restricted. Um, you know, I, I would think that you know if the Steelers were to make him an offer. Baltimore would match that in a heartbeat. They're not going to let him go uh, to you know to another team in the division. Um, so that would that one would be tough to make happen. Um, you know, I, I, I think he is the perfect complement to Mosley, uh, who's more Mosley's more like their Vince Williams, obviously better. Uh, but and that makes uh, also more. I can't pronounce his name either. Uh, that makes him more the, the the cover linebacker that they need next to him. Um, you know, so. I can't imagine that they let that young guy go. I'm just wondering how many they can afford to keep. It seems right. like that's, somebody's that's the key, and that's I mean that's why a guy like Zadarius Smith, they're just not going to be able to keep. Yeah. I mean, they've got they've got like six defensive starters who are heading for free agency. Yep. So they've got some big decisions to make. Yeah, that's that's why I brought that up. So that leads to the question: you you kind of uh, uh, walked into that a little bit, uh, and that is they're not satisfied with Bud Dupree, whatever his contract is. Um, inside linebackers a priority, but would they be con- considering a free agent outside linebacker, pass rusher, and just tell Bud Dupree, sorry, and not sorry? Yeah, I mean, I think they need to do something there anyway, Stan, because, you know, they carried three most of last season, and Anthony Ciccolo is a, is a free agent. Um, the, guy, the guy who I w- want to keep an eye on here is Justin Houston. Um if the Kansas City Chiefs work out a long-term deal or have to franchise tag um, D. Ford, which is looking pretty likely, uh, I, by the way, the- I would deduct money from uh, until he learns how to line <laughs> up on side. Uh, until that point, I, you, you say we'll give you eight million, but it's going to actually be seven hundred and seventy-five million seven hundred seventy-five thousand for costing us a chance at going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was a pretty big mistake oh. uh, for sure. Um, but he's the guy that they're going to sign. I mean, he, I think he had 14 sacks last year. Uh, finally, you know, turned into the play, player that they thought he would be when they took him in the first round. But Houston's on the book for $21 million. They're not going to pay that. Uh, he's, he's not the player he once was, but he still can be, you know, uh, an effective guy, uh, get you, you know, eight to 10 sacks. Um, you know, so if you move on from Bud Dupree again, you, 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 you know, pay that money to to a guy like that, or is it Darius Smith? Uh, and, and you know, I can't say that it's not an upgrade. Uh, but again, they've only got uh, you know Dupree, Watt, and, and a bunch of untested guys. Really, uh, Ola Denny is the most experienced one, and he only played a handful of snaps last year right. uh, behind those guys. So, but yeah, I think they could definitely use another uh, you know experienced pass rusher there. If if that's the way they go, then then that would dictate. Um, that they have to take an inside linebacker in the draft, correct? Yeah. I mean, I, I think they have to do that regardless. Um, you can't continue to ignore the position. And I know, um, you know, last year they went into the draft and, and people said, why didn't they move up? Well, if you look at where everybody was at in that draft, um, they would have had to have moved up to like 20 with Detroit to even have a chance to, to get, in, get at one of those guys. Because all the teams that were in the – Right after uh, Van Der Esch went, um, it was Cincinnati, it was Baltimore, it was New England. They're not going to make a deal with any of those teams to move up. Right. Those teams aren't going to help the Steelers out. Uh, so really, you know, and then Tennessee was at 25, and they knew that the Steelers were looking for an inside linebacker. That's why they moved up. So, you know, they, they just wasn't going to happen. One last thing for you, Dale, uh, and that is um, cornerback is – a position of need, however they choose to address it. But as we've seen in the past, if you're a quarter, a corner worth a damn, you're gone usually in the top 15, 17. Now they'd have a chance at eight, uh, at uh, number 20, depending on how deep it is. Um, are there corners out there that are worth the money who could definitely step in, 
better than what they have now to play opposite Joe Hayden. And let's remember, Joe Hayden is a free agent after this season. Yeah, that's a tough one if you look at it because um, most of the corners who are going to be available uh, are slot guys. They're the smaller uh, you know, guys who, who've made their money in the slot. Typically, if, you know, if a guy's a good outside cornerback, they don't make it to free agency. Uh, you know, it's no, if you look at the two teams that were in the Super Bowl, uh, all four of the starting cornerbacks on the outside in that game were guys acquired in trades. Where one was in free agency. Uh, Gilmore was one that was a, was a free agent. The red, the other three were acquired in trades. Um, it's it's tough to get those guys. I know people think that the that the Steelers have had issues drafting cornerbacks. Well, they're not alone in that situation. Uh, you know, both of those teams also had to go that route to get their cornerbacks. And Sam so Shields. It, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's really difficult to. I, I think because of the way college football is played. Um, Trying to diagnose, you know, these, these guys, these cornerbacks in college just don't see the kind of route combinations in college that they they start to see in the NFL. So you can be a great athlete. Artie Burns is a fantastic athlete, but you know when you start putting double moves on him and asking him to play more complex coverages, he gets lost. Uh, and I think that's the case with a lot of young cornerbacks. Now maybe he needs a change of scenery. I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, maybe at some point the light comes on. He is still just 24 years old. Uh, he's 23, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, there are some corners in this draft that, that have that, that size speed that you look at, and, and they could possibly be available, you know, with, to the Steelers with the 20th pick. That seems like the sweet spot there for the cornerback position. Um, but, you know, as we saw last year, I mean, Cody Sensabaugh played well for them. You know, is he going to light the world on fire and go out and, and intercept five or six passes? No, but he's also not going to make the – the constant mistakes that have guys running free in your, in your secondary. So, you know, you kind of have to balance that out. I, I look at that cornerback position as, as one that um, at this point in the NFL, because the teams throw the ball so much, you almost can't afford to live with the growing pains that you see with a lot of young cornerbacks. And that's um, unless, you know. Unless they're studs. I mean, you know, studs, you know, Patrick Peterson coming out. Denzel absolutely. Ward, guy like that. Yeah, but you don't get a chance at those guys. Those guys go in the top ten. No doubt. No doubt. Um, Dale, great stuff. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll be following you, DK Pittsburgh Sports, and on Steelers Nation Radio, and periodically here on the show. Really appreciate it, Dale. Thank you very much. Oh, anytime, Stan. Okay, thanks a lot. Dale Lolly, there he goes. Make sure you follow him on DK Pittsburgh Sports.